Hello my friends and welcome to another Running with Ryan. I have escaped the safe confines of Boulder, Colorado. I am now in Denver. Why am I in Denver? Well, there's an event called Outdoor Retailer. An Outdoor Retailer is a place where other outdoor brands come and show off their newest stuff. The reason why I'm here is because my next guest is at the conference and I'm running up there right now. She is an OG in the world of ultra running. She has won UTMB. She was top five at Western States. She has won Hard Rock. She wrote a book called How to Run Your First Ultra. Ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna love this lady. Make some noise out there for Chrissy Mel. Check out that giant bear, isn't that cool? We're at the Colorado Convention Center now. This is where Chrissy is hiding. She said she's gonna be at the Ultimate Direction booth. So let's go find her. There are so many people and brands here, it's quite overwhelming. Yeah. This is my buddy Ander. This is my Booyah. buddy Ander. Yeah. He's the man. He's a fan yeah. of Boozer TV apparently. Uh -oh. hey, where's Chrissy? She said she's gonna be here. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, she's gonna meet me here. Dude. Here's a quick plug for Ultimate Direction. They are a Boulder brand. They are one of the original makers of hydration vest, and I love them because they're from Boulder and they're just really good people. And Chrissy is one of their athletes. Check it out. We got Jason Schlarb right here. What's up, buddy? Hey, it's good to see you. Good to You're see really you too. bright today. I am very bright. We're gonna get him on this show another time. He's busy I right promise, now. I yeah. promise. I promise. But this guy's another amazing runner. Go check him out. I'll put his little what's the Instagram handle right here. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, coming up soon, Jason Schlarb. But now we are gonna run with Chrissy. And she's cooler than I am. So have fun. Oh my god, there's another legend here. We got Buzz Burrell. What's up? He's oh, right me. Yeah, oh. this is Buzz. What's going on, my man? Uh, well, we had a good outdoor retailer show. Good to see you here. Yeah, thank Looking you. forward to getting out together. Yeah, we're going to do an adventure together. Stay tuned for that one. It's going to be on the bike, on the foot. I think we she'll can, be on both. We can put you on a surf ski if you want to get wet. <laughs> I like it. Let's do it. Let's oh, do okay. all of the above. All right, the star of the show is here. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. What's up, Chrissy? How you doing? I am ready to go for a run. You're ready to go for a run? You've yeah. been stuck in this building for three days? Pretty much. Let's go. Yeah. Outside. We're gonna run over to the Cliff Bar booth. We're gonna get a quick bite of energy. These are the new Cliff Bar cubes. They're so good. Um, we got a mouthful of food. We are almost out of the convention center. Hey, fresh air. First of all, I would like to show you how awesomely coordinated Chrissy's socks and shoes are. Look at that. That looks good. And then look at me. It's so clashing. So Chrissy, this is the first ever urban running with Ryan. Not psyched about that. She's not psyched about that. I would much rather show you the trails of the chicken nuts up in Bellingham. Yes. Well, maybe that'll be episode two. Okay. We'll I'm go up to him. Washington. <laughs> but the good thing about running is that you can do it anywhere. You uh -huh. just put on a pair of shoes. Just don't you're forget at, your sports bra. Don't forget your sports bra. I never do. I'm strapped in today. <laughs> what is that guy doing on the bike it path? It happened on the trail run. But yeah, you don't see cops on motorcycles on the trails of Boulder. All right, we are officially starting this thing. We've said that three times. <laughs> we are, we are going now. Chrissy, welcome back to Colorado. Thank you. You lived in Boulder for how long? Uh, three and a half years. And that's pretty cool. Yes. But now you're back in Bellingham where you came from, right? I grew up in um, Bow, Washington. Okay. And then, so Bellingham's just 20 minutes north of there. Okay. It suits me after having lived in Boulder. Yeah, like, absolutely. Figuring out that you can live close to trails, pretty sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And really quickly, when I go under bridges, I do this. Ole, 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 join along, it's fun, ole. <laughs> We're out of the bridge, oops, I missed Okay, it. next bridge. <laughs> Oleing under bridges is like, it just gives me energy. Yeah? It's just fun, and I, I like to have fun when I run. How did you get into running? What was your first race? My first ultra yeah. was Chuck and Nut 50K. Chuck and Nut? In 2000. But I got into it because of the guys I was hanging around with. Okay. Scott Jurek, Scott McCubrey, William Emerson. Like She's just dropping names. No big deal. <laughs> Scott Jurek who just won his first Western States. Wow. You can't plan that stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh. Anyway. And you and Scott have been friends for a long time, and Jenny, his wife. Yeah, I knew them before they were oh. a thing. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. And what is it about running that you love? Let's just go down to the core of this stuff. It doesn't even have to be like the long stuff. You ran when you were like in high school, right? High school, college, yep. Yeah. I just love the movement. I yeah. Don't we all kind of relate back to yeah. that? But then it's also like where my legs can take me. Yeah. And I think that's where Ultras kept taking it to another level of that. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, we're getting all sorts of sounds. The audio is going to be very difficult. It is so loud in this town. So you're kind of like an OG ultra running woman at a time OG? when... O original. Oh, really? Okay. Original. Okay. Original gangster. I was like, what does that say? What does OG mean? <laughs> you were original. And at a time when it was like, there weren't many women, and it was a lot of older men running these long races, what was it like back then? Mm. Um, Not that it was, hello. <laughs> Not that it was like that long ago. We're talking like 10-ish years ago. 15. Closer to 20. 20 years ago? <laughs> 2000 was my first 2000, ultra. okay, fine. What are we in, 2019? Yeah, I guess that was a long time ago. I was only 22 when I started. Wow. Yeah. Um, I just actually was talking to this, to Buzz about this on the FKT podcast, is that it wasn't, it wasn't a thing. We're all just runners. Yeah. And this whole like Me Too movement and, you know, gender specific and blah, 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 like, it just blurred that line real easy. Yeah. Maybe it was, it was because there wasn't a lot of other women like to like make it a thing i don't know yeah. but it wasn't a thing yeah i just okay. got to run with a bunch of really cool people and share time on trails and process life and <laughs> cool way to grow up when you're <laughs> running with a bunch of dudes and you're the only woman is it embarrassing to be like i have to pee where do i go pee now i got over that real fast you got over that okay <laughs> i'm a pretty modest person but <laughs> that one i got over real fast. <laughs> <laughs> look at what we have here we have a <laughs> we, we have a tunnel we have a bridge here we go ole 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 <laughs> I watched your TED talk about like the dark, dark moments. Mm. What do you do in a race or even in life if you want to go there mm. when things get hard? <laughs> uh. How do you get over that? My viewers out there, not all of them are, you know, ultra elite runners, but they just want to, we all deal with they want to, everybody deals with challenge. <laughs> How do you do that? Oh man. I think the le lessons change all throughout life, right? Yeah. And I would say my most current lesson is to live in it. Yeah. Like move through it, be in it, don't run from it. And I've always said, oh, well, anybody, anybody that runs long distance races or runs gets asked, what are you running from? And yeah. I've always protested that thinking like, I always feel like I'm running towards something. So that's kind of been the underlying. But now I feel like next level is just really acknowledging what it is and being in it to be able to move through it. Yeah. Cause if you, <laughs> For me, if I like shove it and like put it in a drawer and let it be over here, it'll come back and nip me at some point when I really don't want it to and it's way worse. Yeah, so that, that is so true. Dealing in the moment has been my most recent, like, I'm gonna move through this now. <laughs> I like that, that's the best way. Sometimes, you know, the best way is right through it. Yeah, then just be real comfortable. I don't know if comfortable is the right word, but if you can, the more awareness you can have in that, you also get to have that when you're in the good stuff too. Yeah. So if you can be aware in the hard, you can be that aware in the good. Yes. But if you shove stuff aside, you might not understand how good the good is. That's a good, I like that. That was <laughs> yeah, well cause said. Because it, it's kind of a teeter-totter, right? So if you only let the teeter-totter go like this, you don't really get it. If you let the teeter-totter go, you really get to understand all of it. Yeah. And, and you gotta have just the- just came up with that. That was really good. That was like Dalai Lama <laughs> level wisdom. Oh, it's windy now. You wrote a book about how to run your first ultra. Yep. How do you run your first ultra in a very summarized fashion? Because a lot of people, they want to push their limits. And maybe for some people, an ultra is just going from a 10K to a half marathon. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, your core principles? I'd say my first one is like, the first time you decide to race or do a distance, the goal should be to finish the distance. Because if you try and like set a PR or meet that, yeah. anything beyond just the goal of finishing, you won't do the little things it takes to finish it. Yeah. So in long, long races, if you don't get that rock out of your shoe, <laughs> that could take you out of the race. Yep. If you say, oh, I'm just not gonna eat a gel, I'm gonna wait till I get to the next aid station, that might take you out of the race. So if you do the little things to actually make sure you finish it, you'll learn so much. Yep. So that when you talk with the hands a lot, um, yeah, <laughs> you'll learn so much that you uh, then can figure out the steps you want to do to actually race or set a be personal best. Or, yeah. So that's where I would start. <laughs> you finished that question just in time for Ole, 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 Ole. The sun just came out. It's one of those days in Colorado where it's like, it's windy, it's cloudy, it's going to rain. Nope. It does feel kind of windy. It's a little bit of everything right now. Yeah. 
Um, UTMB, which is one of the most well-known races in the world, mm -hmm. you went there and you won that thing. There aren't many American women who have done that. How was that experience? Uh, I, I got to run the very first edition in 2003. Yeah. So before it was even a thing. Um, but it was a thing. There was like 600 runners and they ran it differently. Like when you started, everybody started together and then you could decide where to stop. Okay. So you could stop in Cormier and get the 55K. You could stop in Champaylock and get the 110K. Gotcha. Or you can make the full round. So I say I won by attrition. <laughs> people are just, ah, that's good, I'm good, I'm good. And I'm just so freaking stubborn that yeah. I had to go all the way around. Well, sometimes it's good to be stubborn as a runner because it just keeps you moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then 2009, I that was definitely a different, and that's over the TED Talk. Yeah. That was a different experience and definitely had learned some lessons from Western States, found a lot of joy in that event, and then like another level of competition at the, at Sean Paylock to bring it in and go for that win. Yeah. And that race is so fun because Europeans go crazy. Oh. They're like, it's like a tunnel of fans. It's like you're in the Tour de Have France. You Have you been there? I haven't been there, but I've watched it on the YouTube. Look at that cool mural. There's one back the other way with these hummingbirds. I like that mural. See, this, that's something that doesn't happen on a trail. They're usually not murals. <laughs> so we got to think of the positives. <laughs> that one. I like that one too. In your TED talk, there was one line that wasn't like one of your main statements, but it really stuck with me. And you were talking about how Sometimes our day-to-day -day life can get tough, but you're like, if you can just get out and go for a run, no matter what the distance, that's like an accomplishment. And that's like a good place to just start to feel good about yourself and, and moving forward in some way, right? Um, yeah, you nailed it right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did a good job. <laughs> yeah, no, I, just, I guess like sometimes when life is rough, you're, you're, I feel like I'm kind of struggling to feel like I'm even accomplishing or doing or whatever and maybe that's part of that being able to just be yeah that I'm working on but a run gives you that sense of I got something done <laughs> I got something done yeah. today <laughs> yeah. and it does feel good like you could be having like a horrible day or even a good day maybe you're just working really hard you've been staring at a computer all day you go for a run maybe it's only a half an hour but it changes everything yeah it changes your whole outlook mm -hmm. makes you feel good you come back and you're like yes I am supercharged oh lay <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that more. Talk about replacing running with passion. Because some people don't, they're not runners. Maybe they're bikers or maybe they're chefs. Yep. Whatever you're passionate about. Parenting. Parenting. Yeah. <laughs> so many things. Talk about that. That was really interesting. I just appreciate what, I guess what inspires me to get out of bed every day is to find somebody in their passion. So like if it's a grocery store clerk that's psyched to bag your groceries yeah. or somebody that opens the door for you and finds joy in that, like that's what I thrive in. Yeah. So as an ultra runner, running is mine. So if I can show that, share that, so that somebody else sees passion so that they can pursue whatever their, oh, <laughs> else close, <laughs> whatever their running is, like, that, um, yeah. that's what it's about. That's what it's <laughs> about. It's that is totally what it's do. about. Well, let's, let's, let's stop talking about running right now because running really is so boring. You work for the <laughs> Conservation Alliance. You're all about saving our world's natural places. And that's really cool. Talk to us about that work you've done. I mean, I'm coming up in the world of ultra running at that time, falling in love with these wild places and then realizing that they're threatened and that people are trying to take them away and drill them or dam them or build more condos or something. Yeah. Or, or just whatever, um, extracting the natural resources. So I just came in as a trail runner and then had my mind open to what's possible. And how do we save this planet? What are some things that we can do because obviously as trail runners as outdoor lovers we want to preserve our natural spaces with population growth you know there's going to be more stress on these places mm -hmm. what can we do oh i mean i'm not i'm not making up anything new like i'm taking words from a lot of wise people before me but you're allowed to do that it's all good <laughs> <laughs> and it was spoken at the conservation alliance breakfast yesterday is find your project like it starts in your own backyard and find something whether it's a waterway or we have a mountain that gets logged pretty regularly, like figuring out what is your project and like learn about it. Cause then that will 
blossom and inspire other people to do the same in their own backyard. And that could be as little as refusing plastic single-use cups when you go to a restaurant. Bring your own water bottle, bring your own straws, ride your bike more instead of dri driving your car. You can speak to that. Yeah, I, I like bikes a little bit. I learned a little bit more about you in the last day. <laughs> he his driver's license until he was 32. That's right. And the only Don't reason, tell everybody! The only reason he got it is he was forced to. I was forced to get a well, driver's license. On his own. Yes. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. Well, you know, I watched an Earth Day special when I was a little kid. Okay. And I wanted to do whatever I could to save the world. And I was I was like, I'm never gonna drive a car. Wow. That was my little you thing. You knew that way back then. That was my little thing. <laughs> Let's talk about the fact that you are not only an ultra runner, you're a race director. Oh, talk about the joys. Comes, yeah. yeah, talk about the joys of being a race director. What? Oh, gosh, I can. That one is, it was my first ultra. The guys that started it are Chuck and Nut 50. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> are still um, very the guy that's main one of the main guys that started it is still very much involved. He marks the course for me every year. Oh. It's such a community-based event. Um, I think it being my first ultra and then watching other people have it be theirs. Yeah. Like I'm creating this space or platform for other people to have a similar experience. Yeah. And it's not just me. Like it's such a community driven thing and this year was such a big example of it we had the craziest winter um in the northwest and i had like compact snow and ice on my course i didn't have ways of getting my aid stations up and my two co rds kevin and tyler the three of us were just such a team figuring that out and then not expanded out to the group of volunteers and like we had to move two aid stations and people hauled everything they had to hike a mile like literally uphill in the snow and i said just take the basics like water gels good and i gave them one of those big like costco tubs full of chips and gummy bears and <laughs> all the typical ultra stuff some guy like figured out how to strap it on his back and <laughs> they had all sorts of extra amenities set up on the snow i think they even had tablecloths that's like, awesome like, what are you so just that full community ownership of an event. Yeah. Oh, a cool bird down there. There's a cool bird where? Right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at this cool bird. Look at that. I, I mean. See, there's a little bit of nature here in the city. In the All right, let's have a check-in. How far have we run so far? Oh, about two miles. Two miles, two miles. <laughs> Strava just said. Okay, okay Strava said that. Dog? Oh, let's see your dog. <laughs> Look at your cute doggy. Peepop, I miss her. Name? Pedi, it stands for Piedra Dura, which translates to hard rock. Yeah, that's right, Piedra Dura. Piedra. Oh, hard rock, good. Good little segue there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have the woman's record for hard rock? Oh, no, no. Um, Diana Finkel, I believe, has it now. Okay, well, yes. you had the record for hard rock at one point, which is an extremely hard race. Mm. It's not happening this year, unfortunately. I know. What, uh, what about hard rock, you know, is really special to you? Because in the ultra running world, it's like there's something unique about it that everybody's like, oh, hard rock. You have to go do this once in your life. Yeah. Uh, the people. Yeah. And anybody, that's, I'm, that's, and I'm not, I'm repeating that because there's so many people that come like for two weeks prior and there's like family reunion vibe. Yeah. And that's, that's a pretty cool thing. And I went for five years as the Montreal girl. <laughs> that was my first job in the outdoor industry. Um, and that, it took that long, like pacing different people and everything to finally feel comfortable putting my name in the hat to even register for it. Like, I was scared by that. I got dropped twice by Leland and Barker. <laughs> oh, wow. They called him Crazy Legs. <laughs> twice. That's awesome. On the downhill. <laughs> On the downhill. I'm not a good downhill runner. Oh, man. I take it pretty gingerly. I crash a lot. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> All right, we've gone far enough. Let's go back. Should we take an Uber? <laughs> no. No, we're going to keep running. So I've read the book North, which chronicles Scott and Jenny's incredible adventure on the Appalachian Trail. And you were there at the very end during his darkest moments. I what was think it? you had some dark moments. <laughs> yeah. What was it like to be there for your close friend and get him over the hump? Uh, you're doing something so, so difficult. Uh, I would, I'm going to correct you on it. It was them. That's true. Okay. Right? Like it was Fair a enough. Team yeah, it was a team. Yeah. And to be honest with you, like I was so concerned about Jenny. Yeah. There had been a lot of stuff for them. The book talks about their efforts to try and start a family. And they were still dealing with that when they went out on yeah. the trail. And I just, 
I know what it is to crew a 100 miler. Yeah. <laughs> she was doing that every day. So when I got there, I honestly was all about Jenny and like just checking in, making sure she was doing okay, taking care of herself. I think it was the first night in like a couple weeks she'd actually like slept in a hotel bed and <laughs> got a shower and because the skies had um, put together a crew to take Scott overnight that uh. night. So I didn't see Scott right away. I remember the next morning I was going to take over from the guys that were on the night shift and pace them over this next section of trail. <laughs> he came in and I, I didn't recognize him. And the thing I noticed, this is really gross, but his spandex were baggy. Oh, it was so gross. It was so <laughs> it was gross. so gaunt. <laughs> Topher and I ended up taking the night shift. So Scott was basically running 20 plus hours a day at that point. So huh. we always had somebody with him. And Tof and I would go into the night and sometimes we would set him up to sleep on the trail for like an hour. Wow. And so it was one night where it was really buggy. So we took like a little one man tent for Scott. I think this is in the book, I can't remember. <laughs> um, one man tent. And Tof and I slept side by side in these like bivvies and we tucked a bug net under each of our shoulder and we just like fell asleep laughing at the irony of what you would do for your dear friends. <laughs> yeah, that's true. In these dire situations. <laughs> Sounds of nature. <laughs> Sounds of nature. Little siren action. What does the future hold for you? What do you want to do in the next, let's say, five years? Oh man, I keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. I really love it. I see it as buckets instead of a career. And at any given point, a different bucket kind of supports the lifestyle. And I don't know, I've had this attitude of I'm in, I'll try. Yeah. And so I honestly don't know. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I love what I'm doing. My coaching right now is probably my highlight. And I get to do this um, Coach's Corner podcast once a month. Cool. So collaborating with Ian Charman and David Roach and Sean Bearden. So there's like other things that come out of each of these buckets. And that's been a really positive one. The clients I get to work with, like I said, the impossible to possible idea. There's a lot of inspiration that comes from that work, so. Let's talk about coaching a little bit. I'm sure it's so highly rewarding to be working with people of all ability levels and getting them to reach their goals. Yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> talk more about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just agreeing with your statement. <laughs> um, I. I think the part that surprises me most is how much it's not about running. Yeah. <laughs> like working with these people and because I feel like, I mean, I've even written a book. Like there's books, there's online resources, there's all sorts of calendars and schedules that anybody could pick up yeah. and work with. But to have like a coach as accountability buddy <laughs> or someone that's going to factor in what's going on in real life to yeah. the training plan. And so I get to be that mind with those people yeah. so I get a little bit more of an insight than just go run five miles yeah yeah and that that people trust me with that is pretty, pretty amazing it's really special <laughs> yeah do wheelie wheelie <laughs> yeah, yeah! <laughs> Woo! he did it so Chrissy I can't thank you enough oh, for joining me today in a little run thanks for getting me out of the show <laughs> totally sharing your story with people I know they're going to find it inspiring. For all of you out there who want to know more about her, I'll make some, some hyperlinks in the description of the video to some of her media and her TED Talk and her book Thanks. and her coaching. Wow, all sorts of things. Yeah. Wow. We're going to pimp you out. <laughs> anyway, so thank you for joining another Running with Ryan. I think we need to go that way. I think we can up. Okay, we got to go up here. Thank you for joining another Running with Ryan. We will see you next time. Chrissy. Bye guys! Bye! <laughs>